What's going on, everybody? Thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that's the most important thing you can do for me on this channel. What it does, that helps make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get their notifications and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm as well. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, please do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends to inform them on this news and information. And yes, that does does help to give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the introduction out of the way, let's get into today's news. And once again, here we go. The foolishness continues. And it looks like we are really going to be in for it this election. Earlier today, we covered how in Colorado, the Secretary of State was recently put on blast by the local news station for voter registration documentations that went out to 30,000 non-citizens. I repeat, in Colorado, voter registration forms went out to 30,000 non-citizens. Uh, the Secretary of State claimed in her response that none of them registered to vote. Okay, uh, outside of that, recently in St. Louis, Missouri, a pro-immigration group, an illegal immigrant, pro-illegal immigrant, pro-open borders group, uh, sent out numerous pamphlets to a workspace where they knew migrant workers were, where in those pamphlets, they were encouraging them to register to vote. That was in St. Louis, Missouri. We have what's going on in Portland, Oregon, and what happened in Vancouver, Washington, uh, where ballot boxes were set on fire. I believe in Portland, only a handful of ballots uh, were burnt up, where in Vancouver, Washington, pretty much all of the ballots were set ablaze. Hundreds of them just up in smoke, turned into ashes. So much going on with this year's election. And now we have this here. Chinese student to face criminal charges for voting in Michigan. Ballot will apparently count. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. I started reading it beforehand, and then I just stopped and said, you know what, let's just get into it, and we'll all figure out what's going on together. A University of Michigan student who is from China and not a U.S. citizen allegedly voted Sunday in an Ann Arbor, in Ann Arbor, and is being charged with two crimes six days before a pivotal presidential election. The filing of the charges was revealed Wednesday in a statement from Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson's office and the Washington County Prosecutor's Office. The press release didn't identify the student, but described him as a non-citizen. Now, why not identify the student? He's an adult. He's not a minor. This isn't a child. This is a grown man who intentionally violated the law. That's who this is, and we should know who he is, and we have the right to know who this criminal is. Uh, the 19-year-old individual from China was legally present in the United States, but not a citizen, which meant he couldn't legally cast a ballot, according to information from the Michigan Secretary of State's office. He registered to vote using his UM student identification and other documentation establishing residency in Ann Arbor. He signed a document identifying himself as a U.S. citizen and his ballot was entered into a tabulator, according to the Secretary of State's office why he was able to register to vote with just his student id is completely ridiculous it should have what should have been required was a valid driver's license uh, or state id and some sort of proof of citizenship that is completely ridiculous uh, but let's carry on the ballot was cast at an early voting site at the university of michigan museum of art on State Street, according to Ann Arbor City Administrator. Later, the UM student voter contacted the local clerk's office asking if he could somehow get his ballot back, according to Benson's office. The student's ballot is expected to count in the upcoming election, although it was illegally cast. I repeat, the student's ballot is expected to count in the upcoming election, although 
it was illegally cast because there is no way for election officials to retrieve it once it's been put through the tabulator, according to two sources familiar with Michigan election laws. The setup is meant to prevent ballots from being tracked back to an individual voter. So you can have this going on rampantly and there is no way to remove that vote. You can have rampant illegal voting occurring. And even if the individual gets caught, there's no way to take the vote back. It just counts. It's good to go. And everybody just shrugs their shoulders and goes, well, it is what it is. What can you do? That is unbelievable and unbelievably criminal. It does. It, that just defies logic when if you know that a vote was casted illegally, it's just basic math. We know this to be a fact. So we're going to remove one vote from the count. One vote for one illegal ballot cast. Why this is such a difficult thing to do is beyond me. But let's carry on just a little bit more and see what else this article has to offer as it pertains to just information. We're grateful for the swift action of the clerk in this case who took the appropriate steps and referred to the case and referred the case to law enforcement, said joint said a joint statement from the office of Benson and Washtenaw County prosecutor Ellie Saviet. We are also grateful to law enforcement for swiftly and thoroughly investigating the case. Anyone who attempts to vote illegally faces significant consequences, including but not limited to arrest and prosecution. What does any of that actually mean if the vote still counts? None of that means anything when the vote still counts. And clearly, as it was stated here, it counts. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, he should be arrested, obviously, and should be swiftly placed in jail. I'm talking about 10 years minimum. You have to sit down for a while. And then after you're done sitting down, you're getting swiftly deported. But outside of that, I don't see why the secretary of state and the county clerk's office are patting themselves on the back. What are you patting yourself on the back for when the vote still counts? That's what doesn't make any sense to me and what's so ridiculous to me that that's what they're doing here. It literally doesn't make any sense and it defies logic. Let's go into this just a little bit more. Uh, the article continues to read as we scroll down. The person is being charged with perjury, making a false statement on an affidavit for the purposes of securing voter registration and being an unauthorized elector who attempted to vote. The latter allegation is a felony punishable by up to four years behind bars and a fine of up to $2,000. According to Michigan law, the standard penalty for perjury in Michigan is 15 years in prison, but it is unclear what it would be in this case involving lying on an application to vote. It should be something even more severe than that. And I think it's safe to say with this article, honestly, we could end it right here. I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description box below so you can read it in its entirety for yourself. But let's just be honest. Once we got to the point to where they said the vote will still count, this video was over. There was really nothing else left to talk about, nothing left to discuss. I mean, we have this situation here where we have this known criminal, uh, this Chinese national who voted in our presidential election. He did it intentionally. They know he did it intentionally. They caught him, but they're telling us, hey, there's nothing we can do about it. Sorry. So you're telling me stuff like this can just run rampant. And even when you catch it, oopsies. Nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Anyways, man, with all that being said, that does it for today's stream. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Please hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video out on your social media platforms. And also don't forget to follow me on Telegram and Rumble. That is extremely important that you do so. Please follow me on Telegram and Rumble at TD Media Group. Both my Telegram and Rumble link will be pinned in the comment section below and in the description box as well. Thank you all for your time. And until the next video, peace and have a great afternoon.